This year marks fifth anniversary of the massive earthquake and tsunami which triggered a major accident at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The man in charge of decommissioning the plant says this year is going to be important for the work. Now Hiro Masuda is the president of the company responsible for the process. Really? Here's it in a nutshell. You're not qualified to stand behind the line, let alone run your own fucking business. Removing the molten fuel is our final goal. It's very important to find where it is. If this can be done, this year will be one of great progress. You sounded so sincere when you were saying Masuda notes he must decide how to remove the fuel. One method is to fill the reactor containment vessels with water before extraction to shield workers from the intense radiation. Experts believe some of the fuel penetrated the reactor cores and is sitting at the bottom of the containment vessels. As early as next month, the company is planning to bring in a remote-controlled robot that can withstand extremely high radiation levels to capture images of the fuel at the two of the three crippled reactors. Do you know personally of any scientists or engineers that are in the process of developing new technology, robots or otherwise, to deal with Fukushima? And does any of it seem hopeful or promising to you? Right, okay. Um, uh, no is the answer to that. Uh, I, I think that, um, that all of the work that had been done with robots to try and sort out Chernobyl showed that it's impossible to use uh, robots because the problem is that the electronic systems that robots work on cannot sustain, um, uh, they cannot function when the radiation fields get too high. Because the radio see, when radiation impinges on, 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 on a substance, on, on a, an immaterial, what it does is it creates electrons. That's why it's called ionizing radiation. It ion, it, it, it's absorbed by the material, and it ionizes the material, which means that it kicks electrons out of the material. Now, the problem is that robots work on electrons. Your computer works on electrons. All of these chips, all of the, all the electronic chips that, that, that you, people use, are all, uh, are all work on electrons, I and mean, you can't have a system where the electrons are just randomly being kicked out all over the place because, you know, ultimately the, the whole thing gets scrambled, and that's what they found in in, in um, Chernobyl. And they had a, they had a, they had they tried everything. They tried the uh, German, Germans had some very fancy robots, and then they tried uh, robots from somewhere else, and they built their own robots, and none of the robots worked. They worked up to the point where they got into the high radiation fields, and then they just went mad, went round in circles, and sort of fell off the side. That's why, in the end, in Chernobyl, they had to send men in. They called them bio robots, and they just they just pulled up 20,000 men from the reserve army list. And they, they, they put roofing lead around them and, and sent them in to pick up this stuff by their bare hands and throw it, throw it over the side. And, of course, they all died. Uh, you won't hear that. I mean, the international nuclear industry says that, says that nobody really died after Chernobyl except a few of the firemen right at the beginning. But there, there's an enormous number of, of uh, people who died because the Russians sent in these, these young men. And the young men just got huge radiation effects, and then they died, or mostly died before they were 40. Terrifying. But this can't happen in Japan, and the robots won't work. So as I say, there's nothing you can do. They just have to dig around it, isolate it, put up a big notice saying, mankind's folly, and, and keep it cool for, the, you know, for another thousand years or however long it is. The people trying to decommission the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been hit by setback after setback. They've battled leaks of radioactive water and faced accusations of misconduct. It's lost them a lot of public trust, and now they're trying to win it back. The operator, TEPCO, has created a company dedicated to the decommissioning. The man who has to navigate those challenges spoke to our correspondent, Yoichiro Tateiwa, and he revealed that he's not sure if he can comply with the government's set plan. Naohiro Masuda is in charge of the entire decommissioning process at Fukushima Daiichi. 
He brings valuable experience to the job. He has worked as a nuclear engineer for decades. Masuda says radiation in some areas of the crippled reactor buildings is still so high that workers can only stay there for a few minutes. The hardest part of the commissioning the plan will be removing the fuel that's cooled and turned into highly radioactive debris. We have no idea about the debris. We don't know its shape or strength. We have to remove it remotely, from 30 meters above. But we don't have that kind of technology yet. It simply doesn't exist. Experts say workers will have to keep the debris submerged in water to prevent radiation from being released. But Masuda says that's not as easy as it sounds. We still don't know whether it's possible to fill the reactor containers with water. We've found some cracks and holes in the three damaged container vessels but we don't know if we've found them all. If it turns out there are other holes, we might have to look for some other way to remove the debris. The government wants that work to begin in 2020. I asked Masuda how confident he is that he can hit that target. And his answer was surprisingly candid. It's a very big challenge. Honestly speaking, I cannot say it's possible, but I also do not wish to say it's impossible. I also asked Masuda what he needs most for the operation to succeed. That is hard to say, but probably experience. How much radiation exposure can people tolerate? What kind of information do residents in the area need? There is no textbook to teach us what to do. I have to make decisions every step of the way. And I must be honest with you. I cannot promise that I will always make the right decision. Masuda says he wants the help of experts in a variety of fields from all over the world. He says he wants to make every effort to carry out the decades of work efficiently and safely. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. More than 100,000 former residents of Fukushima Prefecture are still living away from their homes nearly five years after the nuclear accident. Three municipalities are expecting the lifting of evacuation orders for their residents by the spring of this year. But whether many of them will return is unclear due to fears of radiation and unstable livelihoods. In the case of Naraha town, where the evacuation order was lifted last September, only 5% of residents have so far returned. They cite radiation fears, insufficient medical services and other reasons. The construction of intermediate storage facilities for contaminated soil and other waste is crucial, but less than 1% of landowners have signed land sales contracts.